So welcome everybody. Uh, last Wisdom's Chats for the week. Uh, as Edward said, uh, uh, thank God it's Friday. We love Fridays. Uh, I don't know, there's a, there's a different vibe about Fridays. And it definitely has a, has a good feel about it. Um, and, uh, but today we actually are talking about an, a serious and an important topic uh, about the haves and the have nots, those who are privileged and those who have not been brought up with privilege. Uh, and what is the difference? And I mean, besides, and I, the obvious is, they have, they have and they don't have, they have privilege and they don't have privilege. But how does that um, translate into what people um, desire? What, they, uh, what, what are they looking for out of life? And, and, and I'm glad Trevor raised this because it did make me pause because we were talking more, we were talking about decluttering, we were talking about simplifying, we were talking about minimalism. And is this the privilege of the rich? Is it because we've accumulated and now we have uh, this, uh, um, we almost have a self-righteous aspect to ourselves that we, we, we can, we, we, we don't see it as, maybe not self-righteous, but maybe a kind of arrogance um, that we can let go of, of these things. Uh, whereas other people who have, have never had, uh, where is their opportunity to, to, uh, to, to gain and to feel like they are in fact uh, building something that, that they want. So uh, that's just by way of kind of introducing the topic. Uh, Trevor, you, you, I'm going to dive you in, in the deep end. I know you're typing something, but um, why don't you just share your thoughts? You, this is what you were mulling over yesterday. So I don't know where you are now on the topic. Right. So um, I'm just so sorry that I brought it up because the, the moment that I open my mouth and something comes into it, it's almost like a decision. And then my mind goes into a spin. Uh, it's like a gyroscope because there's so much that is connecting. And uh, so what I did, um, knowing that it was totally confused with my rambling yesterday as I was, I went back to those important sociologists that I always refer to, uh, to just to help guide me because that's perhaps what um, really has influenced me in my younger days. So I just went and got um, a link of them. Oh my goodness, let me... Let me get back to that. Okay, just hang on for me. I'm going to get them for you. Uh, right. No, right. That That's particularly for Ed because I know he does nothing. Um, and, and I suggest to him that he goes and uh, listens to the album and reads the words at the same time um, because it is... It is an album that is based on Orwell's Animal Farm. Uh, and, and the Pink Floyd, um, you know, my first ever LP was given to me by my mother. And she clearly knew that, that I was a problem child and that I was never going to listen to the man. And uh, this is what this particular album is about. And it was a, a commentary on Animal Farm. And it makes phenomenal listening. And if you're not a Pink Floyd fan, um, it's difficult to understand the length of their, their music. But when you actually follow the words together with the music, it all starts making sense. Now, um, what stimulated that thought for me yesterday? I haven't got a clue what we were talking about yesterday, but um, it, it was stimulated by a very, for me, I, a positive attitude towards the future. I just think this world right now is so full of promise and so full of opportunity um, that I'm starting to notice that there is less and less focus on those that are impoverished 
um, those that, you know, you think of Syria, you think of the immigrants, you think of those where this, our screens used to be full of these, these people um, who have nothing and they are desperate and, and we know they're all over the world. But there seems to be a focus at the moment on um, uh, individuals um, who are making, uh, you know, big things are happening. So perhaps it's me that I'm finding a huge amount of my time and the input that I'm getting in is based on people who are doing fantastic things at this time of crisis. Uh, and for some reason, I opened my mouth and said something about privilege versus non-privilege, um, those that don't have privilege. And, and really, it was a taking me back to my time uh, as a youngster, where I was basically living on the beach with nothing. Um, and it was the most phenomenal time of my life. Uh, and here I am sitting now just heading up closer and closer to 70. Um, that's very much like being at Polly Shorts, um, uh, close to the end of the comrades. Uh, it, uh, you, can get the, you can get the feeling. And, and as I'm stripping all these books, not of my making, I wouldn't strip them at all. My wife is forcing me to strip all these books. But really, it is about at this time of our lives, we're turning around and saying, OK, let's simplify, simplify, simplify. And I was thinking about these folks who are just down the road in various townships who, who are living in struggle and survival. They are all different people. And what is motivating and, and driving them? Um, maybe they're looking at these homes and these books and, and this roof over our heads and saying, man, that's all I want. Because that was perhaps what I was thinking back in the days of the beach. Hey, I just wanted to get a nice home. Uh, I didn't think I wanted to get married. My wife sorted that one out for me at the time. Um, and, and, you know, we have these different times. And, and I was thinking about, man... What have I got here? It's, to be able to think like this at these times, to me, is clearly a privilege. And for those people that are having to think absolute survival, they're in scarcity mode. Um, what, what I'm really trying, where I think my mind is going is that we have to put in front of people as much information as possible that anyone can achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve, no matter how hungry you are, no matter, um, you know, just the depth of the struggle. But that's so easy to say from a privileged position. Uh, you have to consider someone sitting there in absolute depth and struggle. Do they have the time? Do they have the ability to think? Um, so that's where my mind was going down the road or road of here I am what a git I'm trying to get rid of stuff uh, and I'm talking about how I love the roof over my head as I'm getting older and older uh, getting rid of all of this stuff and there are billions of people who would just love to have what it is that we have so um, and as I said uh, my mind then, so, so I open my mouth and my mind starts going like a gyroscope because I don't really know what I'm doing. And this perhaps comes back to what is it about me? So I spent the day of analysis on myself. It didn't take a long time. It was about 30 seconds. Uh, what is it that, that makes me? You know what? I'm a decision maker. Stuff it. Uh, two roads. Um, it doesn't take me long to turn around and say, okay, stuff it, let's go down that road. Uh, and then once going down that road, try and work out what the hell to do down that road to make the best of the best of whatever appears down that road and start building. Um, uh, and, and just build upon what you have got. But no, I, I've got to add this. Um, so you can see my gyroscopic mind is on the go here. I look out over society. 50 years ago, uh, you know, I wasn't the biggest guy in town, um, but I also wasn't the smallest guy in town. I now look out over society um, and instead of weak people and fat people and um, that I used to see 50 years ago, 
I see so many healthy people. I, I see, see people that are well built. Um, I, I just see so many more people that seem to be looking after themselves and that it, it looks like a far better society than I have ever seen. Now, is this because my eyes are completely different 50 years later because of the privileged situation I have versus sitting in a struggle situation where you only see what is around you? Um, my gyroscope is spinning. Help me, Lee. Good questions, Trevor. Good questions. And uh, yeah, thank you for, I mean, that's, I do feel like it's wisdom. You said, yeah, it's wisdom. Thanks. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, what... I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that you can make something of it because I haven't got a clue. I go back to the Pink Floyd and the Moody Blues and the Rolling Stones and uh, try and get them as, as uh, evol revolutionary sociologists. Uh, I think they saw it all 50 years ago. Well, and I actually thought you were going to talk about Phineas Ferb. So um, <laughs> also very, very wise sociologists. <laughs> Sorry about the bird noise. Jasper, your take on haves and have nots and privilege and not privilege. Morning, everybody. Yes. Um, I think the first thing that came up when one says the word have and have not uh, how do you define have nots? Because that's subjective. And uh, so for a starting point, one can say, all right, those who struggle to have their basic needs met. But then it says, okay, what is, what is considered basic needs? Because for uh, us privileged people is a, a house in a good suburb with, uh, you know, good school and all of those kind of things. Whereas for another person, it's just basic shelter. Um, so, so until one sort out a, a universal accepted definition of basic needs, uh, it's very subjective, this whole thing of haves and have nots. Uh, so we're literally talking back to that Maslow's hierarchy. Uh, and uh, then I'm thinking of, I'm healthy and I can, I have the use of all my uh, physical abilities. But there, uh, just hold on, someone is coming into the office. Good morning. Um, Sorry, I'm back. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting here. In, I'm sitting in the office, so people are handing their keys as they leave. And we're happy to have people handing keys, means that we, we've done some business. Um, so uh, what was it? Uh, so, so we first have to decide what is the norm, but then I'm also thinking in terms of me being physically able, and there are people that uh, I can't think of that one young man's uh, name now, but he was literally born without legs and arms. But then he learned how to compensate and uh, he can swim and he can jump trampoline and uh, you can do all sorts of interesting things that I'm not even able to do with my, my full ability. So, so is it uh, haves and have nots on the surface? Yes, he has, he doesn't have and I have, but then uh, it doesn't stop him. So it's, it's almost, uh, it comes back then to uh, this, uh, you know, this introduction of, of Trevor of, how do I look at life? And I want to say it's your personal filter. So your personal filter is for if for whatever reason, I'm thinking of buying a certain make of car, uh, then for the next days and months, somehow I just see these cars on the road. I've never seen them before, but all of a sudden I see them on the road because I've put on that filter. Uh, so are we seeing what we have programmed our subconscious mind to see. So um, right now, Trevor sees a lot of uh, very privileged people and well-built people, but uh, it might just be that another person who is now all of a sudden in a phase where they really feel sorry for the whole world and save the whole world is only seeing poor uh, 
people and, and struggling people. So uh, I think at the same time, uh, it's almost like we live in parallel universes. At the same time, things happen. And we, we are in that universe where we then choose to be because of our filter, which then says, okay, but if I'm not happy with what I currently see around me, how do I change my world? How do I move out of one universe into another universe? Well, then you have to change your filter and how do I do that? That comes through education. Uh, knowing of what is there. So the books that Trevor talks about, I was just thinking uh, would be great if uh, Trevor, if you donate those books of yours to the Deep Sluit, uh, uh, you know, that, that uh, Catholic uh, center, uh, because the books have changed me. Uh, so all of us can talk, uh, can, can, see, uh, can refer back to where something written in a book has, has just put you on a different uh, road. But it's, it's education, but it's also exposure. I remember um, how I had a certain frame of reference before I traveled overseas for the first time. And after I traveled overseas for the first time, you know, I wasn't a normal South African anymore. I'm now like Lee. If I have any spare cash, I want to travel. The only thing that's now going to stop me is they make vaccination compulsory. So I've just said, all right, then that stopped my travel. But uh, so, so you change your filter through exposure and education. And then uh, 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 Trevor made that comment of, uh, you know, I quickly make decisions uh, and I just say, let's go left or right. And it made me uh, realize uh, of uh, another saying that there is no right decision. You make a decision then you work it right. So uh, I think with all that wisdom from Trevor and my little bit of ad, I'll leave it uh, for the rest. Definitely wisdom, Jasper. Thank you so much. Uh, Leo, what, what, is, what wisdom are you going to add into, into us today? Well, the reason I kept um, Mars on was um, for Elon, he was saying, you know, for us to be able to get to Mars, you know, will cost us $500,000. Uh, for a trip to, to Mars. And I thought, well, that's all fine and dandy, but I don't have $500,000 even though I want to go. So I'm, I'm effectively a have not when it comes to going to Mars. And that kind of got me thinking back and, and realized that haves and haves not are, is actually much more complex than just a very simple poor and not poor. I mean, yes, Oprah, I mean, poor. Uh, you know, and and um, but but rich when it comes to her mother, you know. Yeah, she was um, molested, and I mean, she can't have children because of her being molested, and um, and her mother brought her through all of that um, um, psychological challenge and damage that was done, you know. And and Oprah now is certainly not a have not, you know. Um, then I then I think of of um, um, my kids. You know I, you know I I, my, my son was it was interesting because you know in in standard seven or eight or nine somewhere there he made a decision he was about thirty fifth in the group, and he now wanted to be number fifteen and so he worked hard, and he got to fifteen because now he can get a little merit badge and then. He wanted to be 10 and he finished matric at number three. So he goes to varsity, back into a big pool, works hard, you know, then he wants to do master uh, honors in English uh, because he did English as a second major. He can't become a professor in English. So he now goes to sociology and does a master's in sociology. And he gets the top mark in sociology at, at, at um, in master's level, you know, and then gets the privilege of going to Chicago and doing a doctorate there. And it's all fully paid for. Now, now, so I couldn't afford to send him to Chicago. So I'm a have not. But he made, a, he made himself a have because by his hard work um, and diligence. Now, you know, you know there's, there, let's go back a, a bit more. You know, if it wasn't Denise who, who took the kids, you know, clambering up mountains and, and jumping off bridges and, 
and exploring the flowers. And, and every Sunday we went to a different place and, and, and talked about trees and, and, and built sand castles. You know, that probably made my kids privileged, um, you know? And so they had a better starting point than, than a lot of other people have. And so I think, you know, I, 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 I talk about, you know, uh, uh, an up dad and a down dad. You know, I had a down dad, you know, and, and, and I've shared this a little bit with you and it's not a dad, but nevertheless, um, you know, psychologically, I, I struggled through life because I could never do anything right. That's what I believed. You know, and it took one man three months to change this. I mean, what, what, I mean, what I'm busy with now, I could never have done five years ago. And I'm thinking haves and haves not, you know. So I think there's a real challenge. And of course, you know, we have taken away, you know, in, in apartheid, we took away opportunities from people. And and for that, we, we should make huge amends. You know, uh, we prevented people going to the right schools and having good teachers and, and they had to live there and they weren't allowed to be on beaches. And, 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 you know, we did that. I mean, I didn't do that personally, but, you know, and, and you know what, if we can make a contribution now to help people through education, um, to expose them to possibilities that, that they might never have dreamed of before. And I'm not talking about Mars levels of 500,000 Rand going to Mars, uh, dollars going to Mars. I'm talking about little opportunities like you doing, you know, you guys at Wisdom are doing, you know, $1 a month to, to have access to an education self-development program. Where the hell do you hear of such a thing? You know, and I think you guys are going to make a huge impact by that look. You know, it's not even a little product. It's an, an, a massive product that will, you know, and now, of course, we need to get alongside them and help them read because some can't read, you know, um, and help them gain the wisdom over the years. Uh, you know, and, and I want to see chats like this with people going through the, that program, you know, um, and saying, well, what did you learn today out of chapter one? You know, um, yeah, if I can, if I can be part of making that happen in some small way, you know, because then three years from now, they will be in a much better space. It took me 63 years to be in a much better space. You know, now praise the Lord that I'm in a much better space, you know, and 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 we can do things that 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 we all participating in. And so, so haves and haves not are very, very, um, uh, it's complex, you know, um, and I am privileged, I can eat, you know, I am privileged, I, I could go down and lock down with dad, because, but, but that was because I took some money and I didn't spend it, I invested it in a house, I tiled the floor myself, I got sore knees, you know, but now I could rent out that space. So, so, you know, um, it, it wasn't given to me. It was also worked for, you know, so it's a challenge. But yeah, thank you. That's my contribution. Thanks, Leo. Yeah, just you know, have all the different dynamics and, and the personal story that also comes in. And um, so it definitely adds to the richness of the, of you say, the contribution. Uh, so Edward. I'm sorry we've missed Alicia. I, if I, I, I feel bad I didn't let him speak, but um, I'm glad, Edward, that we can hear from you. Thank you. Yeah, I think I mentioned before, every evening I make some notes about what I'm going to say, and then in the morning I don't understand them. Um, and, and last night I wrote down swamp, balloon, and clover. And I looked at them this morning and I thought, what on earth was that about? And then I picked up my coffee and after that hit of whatever, it, it, it all fell into place. And I think it's very difficult for us to actually talk about this sensibly because as, as Jasper said, we've got our filters and we've got our opinions 
And we could always pluck out an example to, to illustrate our point. So we could say, and, 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 and Trevor did say it, but he then qualified it. Anyone can achieve whatever they want to achieve. And I think that is true. Um, and, and we can then pick out an example that we want to pick out. And we can say, perhaps look at um, Richard Branson. Um, and say, look, you know, there's a guy, achieve whatever he wanted to achieve, but actually he had a private education. When he failed and got fined, his parents bailed him out. Trevor said when he was on the beach with nothing, you know, he was the happiest. He wasn't on the beach with nothing. And actually, as I've just realized from Leo, he had a right to be on that beach and other people didn't have a right to be on that beach, but he had an education behind him and he had parents behind him. So I thought, well, okay, let's try and remove some of this unconscious bias and look at the data. And I think you guys call it data, um, which confused me yesterday. Um, and I did some quick research and in the UK, 50% of a parent's pay advantage translates onto their children. Yeah. Whereas in the Nordic countries, it's between 12 and 25%. So England or the UK is a lot less fair than the Nordic countries. But the problem with, with percentages, they don't mix very well with distributions. And I'll try to explain that without going into too much maths. If you imagine a graph or, and you've got this really big, thin, spiky bit on the right hand side, which is like, you know, one brilliant thing. And you've got this big sort of low mass on the left hand side, then the average will be in the middle totally unrepresentative of what's going on. So that 50% of parents pay advantages isn't like that at all. And I suppose I could liken it to if you've got loads and loads and loads and loads of people in a swamp struggling in the mud, and you've got a few people in a hot air balloon, um, then you average them out everyone's in clover and that's the trouble with 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 statistics <clears throat> and i looked at some of the, the percentages in the uk six percent of people in the uk attend a private school because we're weird we call them public schools but they're where posh people go and you can pay up to forty thousand pounds a year to send your child there so 6% of the population go to private schools. 74% of all judges are privately educated. When you come down to something like um, two-star generals, well, two-star generals and above, so in, in the armed forces, 70% are privately educated. When you sort of get down into the horrible, grotty, nasty world of business and look maybe at the FTSE, about 40% of all the chief executives went to, to private schools. So out of 6%, 6% went to private schools, 40% of all big business is run by people from there. And when it comes to education, our top universities are Oxford and Cambridge. I much prefer Cambridge because I was born there. I didn't go to Cambridge, but I was born there. So 6% of people go to private schools. 40% of all the students at Oxford and Cambridge are from private schools. So we might say people have equal opportunity. You've got an equal chance of rising out of that swamp. 
but you haven't. And I think I think it was on here. Someone mentioned about um, crabs in a basket because they'll all hold each other back. That's why you're in that swamp. You haven't got that opportunity. The people have got the opportunity. The guys in the balloon, those six percent. Um, so yeah, we we can turn around and say, oh, we had a hard life and we we managed to rise above it, but we're privileged. Even though we didn't perhaps go to private school, I didn't go to private school. I did go to a grammar school, which is a slightly better class of school than most people went to. But most people are privileged in some way. And there's this huge, huge mass of people stuck in that swamp. And I think we need to address that. And, and it's, and you know, Trevor talks about, he sees these people like um, Elon Musk and all that sort of stuff doing fantastic, wonderful things. And, and that is of no relevance to people that, for example, live where I live in Camborne. Really poor, depending on, on, on um, handouts from um, food banks. You know, in the UK, one of the richest countries in the world, people have to rely on charity to not go hungry. So I think you know it's very difficult for us to describe the haves and have nots because we are firmly in the haves. We have privilege, we have education, we have the support of our parents, whether that's good support or bad support, we still have that support of our parents. We have history, we have opportunity. Um, so that's why I'm so passionate about um, that. And then you, you add into that other things. I, I was on a, on a meeting yesterday and we were talking about complaints procedure. And someone was saying, should it be a two-stage complaints procedure and a three-stage complaints procedure, all that sort of stuff. And I said, look, you're talking about the process. You're not talking about people. I said, I've got this friend who's got Asperger's and she made a complaint and it overwhelmed her life because of her condition. And someone else on the call said, I'm so glad you said that, Edward, because I've got Asperger's and I made a complaint I dropped it because I couldn't cope with it. And then someone else on the call, and there were only eight of us on the call, said, I'm so glad you raised that, Edward, because I've got o OCD and, um, what was it called? Excessive anxiety disorder. And it just ruined my, my life making a complaint. So some things we take for granted, other people, because they've got conditions, aren't the same so we are us people sitting here are the really privileged <clears throat> and then when you think of the Elon Musk's and the and the, the Jeff Bezos and all that sort of stuff they are the super privileged and the rest of us the, the rest of the population is stuck in that swamp so that's my thoughts and uh, sorry for banging on a bit but yeah uh, Trevor's right I have got the Oxford Dictionary it's amazing he pays attention to that sort of thing Thanks, Edward. It's really good to get that perspective. And um, yeah, we I, I, certainly when I was thinking about this, I thought, how do we even talk about this? Because um, we we can only come from our perspective and and no matter uh, just because we white, quite honestly, it immediately gives us a privilege. Um, pretty much worldwide uh, that I don't think we, we fully realize, we don't fully realize. Um, so, so that's just one thing that I throw in. But uh, the thing that I wanted just to end off with, which is from my perspective is um, we, this idea of what do we want if we've come from a place of not having. Um, and it was something that I observed with the, the young students that I was working with, the bursary students who were on this IT course. Uh, and they'd come from these very rural, very, um, you know, very poor environments. And, and now it, part of their bursary was not only that their course was paid for, but they were given a salary, a salary that made them uh, the highest income earners 
in their community, let alone their family. And, and now they're in a city that they've never been in before either. And, and so what do they do with, with now having when they've never had before, but now they have? And, and what I realized is you can only want um, to a certain level, your aspirations uh, come from a, a place where, where if you've got nothing, your aspiration to go to Mars is literally that. It, it's inconceivable. So you don't even think it. So, so the first thing that these kids spent their money on was their hair. That was, and, and it was so exciting and so wonderful and it cost them a fortune. It certainly, I mean, I would never spend that amount of money on my hair, but for them, this was something they, they dreamt about, hoped for, and now they could do. Um, the idea of owning a house or a car or going overseas, that, that wasn't even in their mindset until they got the hairdo. And then the next thing was a cell phone, to have an upgraded cell phone. And then the next thing was a, a pair of shoes. So it's, what I just realized is, is what Edward is saying is, is we don't know how, how strong that lid is on. Um, because, and when that lid is lifted, even quite significantly, very hard to see further than just the few steps in front of you. So, um, yeah, so that's just was my experience. Um, so, and we've come to the top of the hour. And um, so I've been so engaged in the in the conversation, I haven't really been thinking about what do we talk about on Monday. Uh, and I kind of did throw it out to the group. Uh, and this is how we got to this subject today. Uh, has anything triggered for you from today that you would like us to continue with tomorrow, uh, on Monday? Uh, well, Jasper mentioned a thing called um, choices and consequences yesterday. Right. That I thought right. might, um, you, we might pick up on. Lovely. Thanks for that reminder, Leo. Let's go with that. Choices and consequences. Oh, love that one. No. Lee, can we also at some point in time discuss your um, clock reading skills? Because you said top of the hour. Oh, sorry. Well, top of the time that we're here together. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you can't say anything wrong on this place. I am the underprivileged. Um... <laughs> Thanks, Edward. <laughs> okay, everybody, we'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye.